of bar terracottas and uh, red knots, the most numerous species uh, amongst others uh, in this flyway. And uh, what they have in common is uh, they migrate thousands of kilometers very often non-stop and um, they always occur in huge numbers, millions, really two, two and a half millions on Bagdaga, up to ten millions use the water sea each year. And what they need is uh, intertidal soft sediment habitat, mudflats. And that's what they take, depend on, that's what probably one of the ecosystems most on uh, danger, most endangered on a global scale even, and with uh, the Wadden Sea and the Bangladesh. Luckily in our flyway we, we still have some um, rather healthy um, mudflats for them on offer. Ah, okay. Um, so this, I, this is the only table I'm going to present you because it's lunchtime and I know you don't want to see them. But this is what, what is sort of guiding us. Um, you see green, which is always good. So all the green, that's bird species populations in our flyway. The green ones are doing well. Um, the red ones are doing not well. They are, of course, our main concern, but we are also always interested in the ones who are doing well because we want to know why do they well. And this is basically um, why we work in this area and why we have this cooperation. And I'm talking about the flyway, the East Atlantic flyway, which has been also already mentioned earlier. Uh, and this is a map. And, and most of our birds, so this is the Wadden Sea, Bonn is probably somewhere here. Um, this is West Africa with Bank Dargan. The one of well, the two major hotspots for migratory birds, but there's a third one also, the Bishagos in Guinea-Bissau, which we should not forget. And all these birds that spend the winter here and migrate along this coast, coastal areas, they breed circumpolar all along the Arctic. They go as far as East Canada, Greenland, but also in far into Siberia, Russia. Um, we've heard a lot about the Wadden Sea, I thought I'll show you also a map on it. So this is the Dutch, Netherlands, German and Danish part. You see the greyish areas, that's the mudflats, that's the important habitat for the birds. And the green is the <laughs> land. This is quite an opposite picture that you find in Mauritania. That's a satellite image of the West African coast. Up here, Western Sahara, Morocco, Senegal down here, and this is more the Mauritanian coastline. And the Bank Daga is this area. And here's a map. And, and what is in here as a graphic, but it's in reality as well. Here you have the hinterland brownish sandy, and the mudflats are green because they are covered in seagrass beds. And just a few aerial pictures of the mudflats. This is the Wadden Sea, and you will see there is not much difference in the two sites. The mudflats with the tidal channels, that's the open sea, so with incoming tide all this will be covered, and with the outcoming, outgoing tide this will be free for the birds to forage. Huge sand flats, for in comparison there is a not so small boat going do down to Hamburg. Um, yeah, huge areas for the birds to forage in the Wadden Sea, but also, and this is a similar aerial picture of the Bank d'Algan. But where you already see, this is an island, so this is sand, it's really desert, mudflats that you can see here, and tidal channels that bring in and out the water. You also have heard already, it's an area where we have mangroves, it's a biogeographical crossroad, the Bank d'Algan, where we have mangroves, which are more uh, tropical, coastal uh, plant species. But we also have, well, I can tell you, we also have Sostera, or um, I can't remember the other one, Spartina. That's true, Sostera is in the sea. Spartina areas. So these two um, plants meet in this area. Um, this is one of the fishing villages in the, in the National Park, one of seven. And huge mudflats here that you can see, just about covered with a tidal channel. Um, very different picture from the Wadden Sea coast, mm -hmm. where you have uh, quite a strict line of dikes that protect us from the water. And again, the green hinterland and the 
grayish mud flats. Just uh, to give you an impression again of the fishing village, and here the green mud flats, they are exposed <coughs> now, and from the other side where you can see a very high density of birds foraging there, gaining energy for their migration. And that's a typical view of the wooden sea mud flats. So not so much seagrass, but more um, mussel banks, shellfish remains. And that's uh, just also an impression of a typical um, salt marsh uh, vegetation <laughs> with the tidal channels. Again, green comparison, the um, Sostera and the uh, no, Spartina and the mangrove uh, coastal vegetation zones of Mauritania. So quite different, but they're not so much different. And that's why also the birds use uh, like both places. This is the spoonbill. Um, they winter in Mauritania, but breed more and more in, uh, in the Wadden Sea. They have a very uh, positive uh, still population development. And I took this picture also to maybe show you how we uh, identify which species actually use the same places. And you can see this individual has color bands with an EJ inscription. There's another one back here with color bands. So we catch birds at one site, put individual markers on them, and then we observe them at other places with uh, binoculars, telescopes. Lots and lots of uh, volunteers, lots and lots of private people all along the coast contribute to this knowledge about where the birds go and also the numbers. Another example, the lesser black-backed gull, that's not a shorebird, but well, something similar, breeding in the, in the wooden sea in the salt marshes. Pelican is not occurring here, unfortunately. Um, again, sandalings, also one of these long-distance migrants that migrate all the way up to, uh, to, to the Arctic, again, color-banded individual. Just this year, two weeks ago, I heard from friends in Greenland, they have seen an individual that has been caught in uh, Bagdalgan. So it's going up there to breed, and uh, turnstones as well. Amazing flights, the red knots. Um, yeah. migrates four or five thousand kilometers non-stop without foraging and sleeping. They are still numerous, these birds, but there is also a lot of danger. And uh, this is a picture that should highlight the strategic Im importance of both the Wadden Sea and the Bang Danga and the Bijagos down here. You see, all the, the, this is the breeding area, a huge catchment area of birds being funneled through the Wadden Sea and wintering down here in West Africa. And if anything happens to these sites, it will have a huge impact very far away from us in the Arctic because the breeding birds won't go there anymore because they will be declining in numbers. So we have a huge responsibility for both areas to protect them, to um, sustain our shorebird populations. And we have a lot, a lot of danger looking at us, as we have seen before from the <coughs> harbor for the Bang Danga. And this is also um, reality, oil and gas exploitation in the Wadden Sea. Um, road, more and more infrastructure along the, the borders of uh, uh, Bang Danga. So this is why we really have to join forces, and this is one of the reasons why this memorandum of understanding between the Bang Danga and the Wadden Sea is so important. And I just highlight some of the uh, important um, agreements that are in this memorandum, actually. Um, so, oh, sorry. No. 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 So what we really want to know is the shared knowledge and experience, because we do live very far apart. We do have differences, but also similarities. And we care for the same bird population. So we really have to exchange our knowledge, experience, but also our actions. And uh, the, the goal is to manage and conserve these migratory bird species on a global scale, because they depend on each site at a certain time in the year fully, and they, can't, um, they don't have much flexibility to move to other areas, so we have to work together. If one site fails, then the others will um, see, well, will we'll have to live with the consequences. 
it's supporting research activities because we have to know what we are conserving and we have to know what act which actions are actually valid and uh, successful. It is promoting uh, cooperation among the parties all along the flyway, which is important because these birds use the whole flyway. They have a different view of the world than we have. And um, one more. It's almost done. <laughs> yes, that's true. <laughs> so yeah, and, and we have already started to work on it. This memorandum has been signed in 2014 in February, but we have already started to work on it. Uh, we have already had a joint to a bird count this winter in, uh, in Mauritania. Uh, we had already meetings with uh, scientists and other managers and we exchange um, we have exchanged knowledge and we keep exchanging knowledge this event where we meet again and, and have time and opportunity to talk and, and develop our ideas any further. So we use every opportunity and we have come already quite far, I would say, given that it's less than two years that we have started. And uh, yeah, so just some pictures, a visit of the Mauritanian delegation in Germany to look at information centers, our bird count, Preparation. Hassan here, a PhD student from uh, Mauri from Mauritania, studying in the Netherlands, explaining the mud flats, catching birds, and we do a lot of drinking tea. That's how we sustain our friendship. Thank you.